A warm welcome to you to another edition of Get It Right. My name is Susan Mwangi, your host. Now, we have been having these discussions regarding the use of pesticides and fungicides, where some organizations feel like some of these pesticides and fungicides could be cancerous. To help us understand more about this topic is an expert who will be telling us more about the impact of use of these pesticides and fungicides in the agriculture sector. Joseph Ongeri, welcome to the show. Tell us more about yourself. Thanks, as you have said, I'm Joseph Ongeri. I work with Greenwise Innovators. This is a company uh, comprising of experts in agronomy. We give several services to our farmers. We train farmers on the safe handling of pesticides. We train them on the good agricultural practices. We also build uh, greenhouses for our farmers. So we are talking about uh, pesticides and fungicides and their impact. What is your take on that? Yeah, uh, regarding your introduction, Susan, uh, you talked quite a, large, uh, a lot in a, a statement. Pesticides uh, are incorporated in our farming such that we can, at the end, produce the quality produce. Then uh, the pesticides and the fungicides have detrimental health hazards if not well handled. So we are there to train our farmers where we have realized that there is a gap of information. So if the, the, if the pesticides and fungicides are not handled properly, they will instead hit back to the farmer. But if they are handled properly, finally they work well, they pro give us uh, a good produce and of good quality. Okay. Yes. And who controls the availability of these pesticides? Yeah, in Kenya we have a government organ, a government arm, that's the NEMA. The NEMA is responsible for the, for the it has reg, uh, regulations for the storage and buying of the right uh, pesticides. You realize that we, have, we can have uh, the entry of uh, obsolete and banned chemicals to the country, but this is an arm that controls all that. Under it, we have the PCBB, which is the Pest uh, Control Produce Board, which also eyes on the movement uh, of the right pesticides and fungicides in the country. So before end produce, before end pesticide is uh, imported and used in the country, it has to be stamped by the PCBB. And who advises the farmer on the correct pesticides and fungicides once now they need to, to go probably and buy from the, from the suppliers? Um, that's a very important question, Susan. We realize, and I think you have also realized, that farmers have a gap of information. The government is the one which is uh, eligible for giving that information to the farmer. But you realize farmers are accessing uh, pesticides and fungicides without this information. Most farmers uh, buy the, 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 the pesticides from the agrovet with their own knowledge. But it's supposed to be the, the, the vice versa, the opposite. The government is supposed to train farmers on the safe handling of chemicals because this is a hazardous uh, product to handle. So one needs to be prepared, needs to have this knowledge on which product to use, for what problem, and on which status, on how should he be uh, ready to handle this produce, this pesticide. So you, have, you are asking who is supposed to train the farmers on the safe handling of this. It's the government. We also have uh, the private uh, companies, private sector, that have been registered by the government. These are experts who have uh, t uh, trained on agricultural uh, uh, knowledge. They have the knowledge on how to handle this. Then these farms, they can train farmers on call. So we have two parallel running teams, the government, and the private sector. 
but on the farmer's expense. Yes. Maybe you can give us a little bit, uh, a little history about pesticides and their use in the growth of crops. We got this from the Western. Uh, they came in when the Western farmers who are doing this in the African countries realized that there is uh, quality compromise. So the pests that are in, in our country and the diseases, they were to be counteracted by the, in, uh, the, the, pests, the pesticides which they manufactured from their country. And then they did this, I think, in good in, in good will. Yes. It's only that there is that lack of knowledge, which is a gap with the farmers. Yeah. And out of the pesticides that are now in the market, do we have those ones that are considered to be safe and those ones that are not safe? Yeah, I can say that almost all of them are safe and, no, and almost all of them are not safe. What do I mean? The user. If the user uses them wrongly, all of them are not safe. If the user uses them properly, all of them will be uh, safe to handle. Um, the World Health Organization has classified them into four classes. Class one, which I think our, our government is not really in support of, class one is known as to be toxic class. And when you buy the product from the market of class one product, you will see a, a red band at the lower part of the container. The red is the red card. The red shows you that this is a class one product which is very toxic. And most farmers are not allowed to use this because they might not even be able to handle it. To handle it. So the class one products are very, uh, they are expensive in one way, and then they are expensive to handle. When, you, when a farmer uses this, he's even supposed to vacate the area where he has uh, done the spray for 24 hours before he re-enters the area. But most farmers might not meet this. So the class one, the red colored uh, 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 pesticides are very toxic. Then we have class two. The class two have a yellow band uh, uh, label on the on the container. This one is a class two which is relatively not toxic. We say they are harmful. It's a harmful class. This harmful class is also harmful. It's also toxic yes. if not handled properly. So we, are, we also have class three. Class two, once a farmer uh, sprays this, he should come back after 12 hours. So the first one is 24 hours, that means you take a day before you come back. The re-entry period is 24 hours. Class two, the yellow band uh, branded uh, uh, pesticide, you come back after 12 hours. Then class three, you can easily know this is a class three by looking at the container. It has a blue band around the container. You, the, the farmer is supposed to come back to revisit the farm and work there after six hours. We have the last class, which is the agricultural class, with a green band around the container. This one, a farmer comes back after the spray, after four hours. So it is an agricultural class. It's not very harmful, but one has to come back after the crop has dried. So maybe to help us understand more, you have uh, identified the four classes. So what particular, what kind of crops are required for the class one, the class two, because they sound really toxic. And what, and, and what disadvantage or uh, is it harmful to human health? We don't start with class one. We start with class four, which is the agricultural class. It's not a very hard, a very hard pesticide. Then it's not, uh, uh, an hazardous uh, pesticide. So you start with the agricultural class when you see a problem. It is, it's, it's accommodative, it's not very harmful. Then by chance, you might finish your problem by using class four and come back after four hours and then it has no uh, a negative environmental impact. Yes. 
either to the farmer or to, to the community. Then our farmer, if we realize this, that the problem is not, is not finished, he will come back with class three. Then he gives it time. Then if the problem persists, he will come back to class three, class two. So from there, I think by the time he's doing that, the problem should have gone. But most farmers, you see, they prefer using class one because they feel they will eradicate the problem and save time. But by doing so, they, have, they, 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 they forget to realize that they have started with the higher class. If the problem is not eradicated at this stage by using class one, you might not have an option. So that makes me want to ask the question, do we have preventive pesticides or, uh, or farmers first of all have to see the, you know, the pests and the diseases now for them to be able to cure them? For example, let me take an example that in your farm, you realize, Susan, you have the white flies. But then these white flies in an area of 500 meters square, you find them two, three. You don't have to come with the pesticides and start spraying. So what you do, you do your scouting, and once you, you, you find that it has reached a, a th an economic threshold, you can decide for a spray. But before a spray, Susan, I always tell our farmers that they should incorporate the, 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 the protective program with the biological way, whereby um, they can start with cleaning the area. Maybe the weeds have, are the ones harboring these insects, the insects. So you remove, you do the weeding properly, you, you water the plant, because once you, you, the plant uh, is, is, uh, lacks water, it will be weak and it can be easily be attacked. So there are many things you can do before you do the pesticide application. What contributes to the spread of pests and diseases? Yeah, there are a number of things that uh, can contribute to the spread of uh, pests and diseases. One, if we don't do proper agricultural practices, that means if we avoid doing the weeding in, the, in our farm, there are some weeds that are well known to harbor some pests and the diseases. So we need to do the clean weeding, make sure that the crop remains the crop in the farm, then eradicate and remove all the weeds that could be harboring the diseases and the pests. Secondly, we do the crop rotation. If we don't do uh, crop rotation, some crops are known to harbor well some diseases or pests. So if you continue doing that season after season, you'll finally find that you have built up numbers of given pests and, pest, uh, and, and the diseases in one locality. So, but when you introduce a different crop, Susan, you will realize that the, 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 the pests that were friendly to the previous crop have been eradicated naturally. So, and again, another thing is delayed uh, action against the, the pests when you realize that they are there. When you realize that you are, the pests have invested your farm to an economic threshold, then you delay uh, acting against them. You'll be giving, giving them chance to increase and more time. It will be very hard for you to come and start controlling them. Uh, so Ongeri, from what you've said, uh, what I have gathered is that proper agricultural practices and crop rotation are some of the remedies that farmers can use in order to control the spread of pests and diseases. So I, I think so far so good. I believe that you're learning so much when it comes to the usage of pesticides in our farms. And we will be taking a short commercial break, but don't go too far. We will be back.